Hi, and welcome to the eighth session of the Getting Started with Plexus 2D. This time I'm going to talk about the Plexus input workflow mode called Stage Construction. First, we'll do a quick recap of the different modes that we have. We have five of them in Plexus 2D input. And then we're going to talk about the construction stages and the setup, how to activate and deactivate elements, how to set values that we can change uh, material properties, and of course, how to run the calculation. To illustrate this specific workflow, we're going to use a case called the dry excavation using a tie back wall. So we're going to do the stage construction of a deep excavation. A quick recap of the modes. We define the soil and the soil layers, so strategically, we define it in the soil mode. That's the first mode. Then in structures mode, we can add structural elements. We can define loads and other types of boundary conditions. So those two blue modes will create our geometry setup. And then we're going to move to the mesh mode. And in flow condition mode, we can define our water conditions. And finally, we are in stage construction mode. The previous session also discussed a bit about the stage construction mode, how to set up different phases. In this session, we're going to more in detail how to set up specific construction sequences together with your phases. So when we are in the stage construction mode, this is what we see. We have changes per phase by means of the phase explorer. So we covered that in the previous video. And the construction sequence per phase, we can control this through the model explorer the select, or the selection explorer. Or we can do that directly in a draw area. We can use the right mouse button to activate and deactivate elements, for instance. There are many changes that we can make in any construction phase. So we can activate or deactivate soil and structural elements. If we have anchors, we can pre-stress them. In some cases, you want to change the material for the soil or the structural element because it's stiffness or strength properties has changed. Uh, think about soil improvements. There we're actually going to change it from one, one material to the other. Apply loads and prescribe displacements. Specific for, vo for the volumes, we can apply and prescribe volume strains. Uh, we can change groundwater levels, uh, ground temperature. So there are many, many, many changes we can do. And uh, we're going to show this in the continuation of our example. So we already have defined the geometry, we generated mesh, that's done in the previous sessions. And now we are entering the stage construction mode and we're going to add phases and we're going to activate and deactivate elements. So here is the model that we continue from the previous sessions. And we already have an initial phase using the KNOT procedure. And here, phase one, we're going to add this one here and uh, we're going to call this wall installation. Now what we're going to do with this phase is that we want to activate the retaining walls that are here. So they're first installed before we do the excavation. And also we're going to activate a working load here at the side. So that's first in this initial phase, we're going to um, select the entire wall here. So we can click on this one in the selection explorer. You can see that we can activate and deactivate elements. I'll just activate everything at once. You can see that the uh, check mark is activated for all the items that we have just activated and also when we look at the geometry you can see that the colors has have changed and that means that they turn from gray which means inactive into the color that we gave them while defining the materials and we can do the same here i select the whole wall with the interface elements i can do a right mouse button and what i can do here from this option and there are multiple options here um, I will just activate everything. You can see also here we have plate where we can just activate only the plate or maybe just the interfaces. In this case, I want to just activate everything at once. And you can see everything is activated here. I'm also going to activate the load here. So I'm click on it. In the selection explorer, you see here at the side is that the whole load is activated. So I will do that. But the working load is not one kilonewton per meter per meter out of plane and we're working with a 2d plane strain analysis so in this case i'm going to set this to minus 10 kilonewton per meter per meter out of plane so basically this is a 10 kilopascal uh, surface load and you can see it's activated it turns blue which means it's active the next phase will do the first excavation that means we have to Deactivate the top part. So first, let's add a new face. So I click here on the plus. I'm double clicking here on the face. 
and then I'm going to give it a name. Um, I'll call it first excavation. It will be a plastic calculation. Uh, we don't do any time dependent calculations or time interval is kept at zero. I will not change the deformation control parameters and the numerical control parameters. I can assume the default ones. And what we do, we go here, we select this, this one. We can also use the toolbar here at the side. And with the first two items here are uh, options for selection, single select option. And here we can have a multiple select option for, for instance, multiple soils or multiple uh, structures. The next option is to activate or deactivate the element that we're clicking. So we can toggle to be on or off. Material database. We can preview the face. So if we have set up a face, we can go to the preview. We can see how it looks on the on mesh level, what's going to be used for the calculation. It can be very important when looking at pore pressures. This option here is to select point for curves. So here we can select any point in our mesh and then uh, it will track all the data for that specific point. That can be useful if you want to get uh, specific curves from your results. The calculate button here. So here we just do the uh, uh, hit calculate and the find element calculation will start. Once that is done, we can have here a button. Um, so the one with the magnifying glass is that we will look into the calculation results. So those are the buttons. Um, I'm going to use the tool for toggle activation. So I'll just deactivate this top one and you can see it's deactivated because the, uh, the color of the region will be switched off. And uh, so it will be deactivated here. Next phase, it will be the first anchor row. Again, also a plastic phase without any need for changes. So we just do a drained excavation here. And I'm going to activate here all these elements. You can see we have activated these. But while installing our ground anchors, we also want to pre-stress these elements. So what we can do, we can just select this item here. And we can go here to the Selection Explorer. And we can see here that we can apply um, the, the pre-stress. So I'll just click it. And we can, here we can set a value for the pre-stressing value. And in this case, we're going to set a 500 kilonewton pre-stress value. You can see also in the units here, this is a value that we apply per anchor. We do the same at the other side, of course. We also apply pre-stress at 500 kilonewton. So that concludes our first anchor row phase. Next is to do the next excavation, so this will be our second excavation. Again, all the same settings that apply, and we're just going to deactivate this one. Now make sure while you do your excavation that you follow your real building sequence in order in the steps to make sure that we have a realistic stress path development in your finite element calculation. The next phase will be a second anchor row. Again, still plastic with the default values. And we're going to activate this one. So with control click, I can select multiple items simultaneously. So you can see I have now both the bottom uh, row of ground anchors selected here. I'll just activate everything. We're also going to activate the pre-stress and the pre-stress value. And the pre-stress value here is set at 1000 kilonewton. And you can see everything is nicely activated. The final excavation phase, and you can see also here that our groundwater table is now at our excavation bottom. In the next phase, we want to do a final excavation step, but we want to make sure that our pore pressures are also updated properly in order to have a, a dry excavation. So the next step is phase six, called final excavation. I'll click OK, and here we can deactivate the bottom part. Now, of course, we can just select this item and set this item to be 
dry, but of course that means that the pore pressures in this area below the excavation bottom, they are, didn't change. We can use a groundwater flow analysis for this one to set that up. So that's what I'm also going to do. First we go to the phase and we can see that our pore pressure calculation type is here, so set to phreatic. I'm going to use a steady state groundwater flow in this case. So here we're just going to use a steady state groundwater flow analysis. Um, it will determine our steady state pore pressures and phreatic level based on the hydraulic conditions. Um, of course, our soil permeability needs to be set up. So our soil requires a hydraulic conductivity value. So I click OK. Now we just have uh, the main water table. Of course, we have to change that. I'm also going to change now back to flow conditions. And in flow conditions, I'm going to create a new water level. I will say create water level. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use the new water table as a means to define the groundwater flow boundary conditions for the groundwater flow. So I'm making sure that on the boundaries, I have the proper groundwater head that I want to have. I also want to, here at the excavation, want to make sure that the uh, that the groundwater head is set such that we have the dry excavation exactly at the uh, at the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing at the other side of all things. We have to be careful a bit with the boundary conditions. Um, we can check the, bound the general boundary conditions here. We can go to model conditions. And then in groundwater flow, we can see that the uh, boundary on the X min and the boundary on the X max are open. So it means that left hand side and the right hand side are open for groundwater flow. So that means that water can freely flow in or flow out of the model based on the hydraulic conductivity and the rest of the boundary conditions. The bottom uh, Y min is set to be closed. So that means there will be no flow through the bottom. And the top is set to be open. So this is the configuration that we want to have. Now we have drawn the new water table. But we have to make sure that we're actually going to use that in the calculation and because we now see two water levels and actually the original one is still set to, uh, to be the global water level. We can change this again in model conditions, we go to the bottom and we can see here, I'll scroll this up a bit for you. We can see that the global water level is set to borehole water level one. So this is one is generated by the definition of the groundwater head in the borehole that we did in soil conditions mode. Here we can select user water level one. So user, level, user water level one is the water level which I just created. So I'll select that one. And you can see that now the global um, annotation with the water level is now changed to the other one. Now, if you're not sure which element is selected, uh, which water level is selected for which element, we can click on it and you can see the highlighting of the green, which is the associated groundwater level with this one. Or if we click on global, we can also see which soil volumes are connected with this global water level, because it's possible to override this manually for the different volumes. Back to stage construction. So this concludes the setup of our deep excavation project. Now, I mentioned that we also want to select a point for our curves if you want to generate a graph. So I'm going to do this in this demonstration. So we click on this item and then the Plexus Out program will start. And there we can select a specific node where we want to check the development of, for instance, deformations or stresses. In this case, I want to select a specific point where the ground anchor connects with the retaining wall. So I will have to zoom in. And I can use the mouse scroll bar here, or I can use the zoom tools at the top. So I just want to zoom in on this part. So I will select the point here at the top, um, at the top of the ground anchor that's connected with the retaining wall. And I'm also going to do it on the second layer. So we selected these two points, and with that we can we'll be able to follow the development of the deformations in the curves program after we have run the calculation. So I've selected these two nodes and I can press update to go back to the Plexus input program and make sure that my changes are saved.
And the next step would be to run the calculation. And I'll do that. The calculation will start and you'll see a progress bar with some information of what's happening during the calculation. Um, for instance, we can see some small graph that shows the development of the deformations. Um, and there are a few other uh, indicators here that indicates how much progress we have during the calculation. At the same time, you see here that we get green check marks. So that means that the calculation has converged to the solution that we would like to have. And once that is done, we can select here on this button here to view the calculation results. And we're going to do this in the next session. So in the next session, we're going to talk about the results that we got from this analysis and what we can see there.